Job. And welcome, dear friends, to Tuesday evening. It should be Brother Rob this evening, but sadly for, for a penance you've got me because Brother Rob's in bed with flu. And I've stepped in. So tonight we're going to follow on from yesterday evening when we were sharing with your heart some of the amazing thoughts, ideas, spiritual inspirations about the cosmology of Christ by Matthew Fox written in 1984 a long time ago and it really has touched my heart because since doing the recording last night I've done a further two today where I was guided to just take a back step and focus on what was he really saying when he asked us to forgive for the church for the established Christian church to forgive themselves for how they handle the whole situation regarding withholding the truth from the children of God. And that really has stayed with me, it's stuck with me, it's left a lump in my throat. at the injustices carried out in the name of God, but not wishing to condemn it's not easy when one is challenged to face one's fear and I dare say it's not easy for an organization such as the Christian Church to take responsibility for silencing the good men and women who have been touched by the Spirit of God to speak God's truth like Jesus when after he was baptized by John at the River Jordan he began a three-year ministry only three years and in those three years he was like a raging, uncontrollable fire. Like what we're having now in Southern Australia. He touched so many lives, but he challenged many others. And the ones he challenged were the ones who were giving lip service to God, who were upholding the letter of the law and not the spirit of the law. And I guess deep down within each one of us, there is a part of that where we uphold the letter of our belief to the, to the point of compromising the spirit of the belief, where we pay more attention to the observances around the belief, such as years ago, as a Catholic Christian, we had the nine first Fridays, the nine first Saturdays. You didn't have meat on Fridays and on Wednesdays, and you didn't do this, and in Lent all the statues were covered, and you began a fast whether you liked it or not. It was as if you had religion rammed down your throat, whether you liked it or not. And I can understand why so many good people rebelled, rebelled against God for how his church had misinterpreted the observances. Because in a way, really, if you take the message of Christ to your heart, he did say that whatever you decide to do regarding prayer with God, go into your room in secret, shut the door, 
Don't let anybody see what you're doing. And it seems to contradict, doesn't it? What the advice that we're getting from the wise ones in the Vatican or in Canterbury. And it re they really leave themselves wide open to scrutiny because they're not transparent. And anything today that's not transparent, I would be wary of it. I'd give it a wide berth. It's like the old boys network. It's like in nursing. Um, many years ago when I was a senior charge nurse on a very busy medical unit, and, uh, you know, I was only young in my late twenties and I ran a very, very busy unit, but we encountered a few issues within the community, um, around the hospital. We encountered some disagreements with higher management who were obviously cutting corners and the woman who took charge of the whole nursing division, the director of nursing or the divisional nursing officer, she was an absolute tyrant. No mercy. And a lot of my dear friends ended up having breakdowns and ending up in psychiatric hospitals because of her. And my dear friend, who was a good friend, um, he was disciplined by her for a member of his team when he was on holiday for giving the wrong drug. And I was the health and safety rep for the Royal College of Nursing and I had to go and support him. And my gosh, even I copped for it. And she used to come on my ward unannounced like a sergeant major and intimidate you in front of your staff and put the fear of God into you, which she didn't put it into me. And I remember one day her summoning me to her eye office and I went in and she expected me to be trembling and sneezing and, but I didn't, I just stood there and she more or less tried to throw the book at me for, for speaking out against her. And I said to her, I'm not afraid of you. So why do you treat people in such an appalling way? And she looked with such venom in her eyes. How dare you? Who do you think you are? I said, there's only one person I fear. Miss Waterhouse. That's God himself. And you too have to render an account to him for the abuses of office. But I can sleep at night, can you? Well, at that, she threw something at me, so I escaped from the room. Because clearly, people today who become so filled with their own self-importance, they become rotten inside. Or as Jesus said, like sepulchres with dead men's bones. And that's what happens in every organisation, be it church, be it secular, be a clerical. There are individuals who are so insecure, so terribly insecure, that they take the letter of the law to the extreme and they create an imbalance. And I feel that that's what's happened in religion. They've taken the word of God and they've added so much of their own stuff to it that people are scared to break wind, forgive the expression. So I truly believe today when you read something like Matthew Fox has written about the cosmic Christ and you see the abuses being carried out in the name of God where religious leaders deliberately deliberately withhold truth and where they punish those who speak God's truth as poor Matthew Fox when he was almost excommunicated from the church he was he was stripped of his holy orders 
and he was silenced by the present Pope for daring, for daring to speak such heresy. But he wasn't speaking heresy, because all that we've writ read so far, and it's not a lot, it's not heresy, it's truth. And you can feel the Spirit of God moving and breathing. And today the Spirit of God is touching every child of God, more so since the shift, December 21st. And I guess major organizations and religious communities and communities such as Teo will have been touched in a profound way where the wheat, the chaff is separated from the wheat, where those who give lip service to God, but who drag others down by their bitching, their uncharitableness, scoring points, lack of forgiveness, immaturity, they will try, like a cancerous growth, to use the energy to drain the resources of love and to put in its place seeds of discontent. Having lived in a monastic community myself, all you need is one rotten apple. And in a given period of time, the whole barrel can become corrupt. As happened to the church in the 12th century, when Francis of Assisi was born, he came into a church that was rotten. And that's very hard to take on board, that you can imagine men and women of God living debauched lives. It beggars belief. But we shouldn't be shocked, because wherever you've got human beings, you've got chancers, takers, those who will take opportunities and hope that they won't get found out. Let's carry on reading from this amazing book. It's starting to fall apart. I've, I've been reading it so much. It's actually because it's so old, it's starting to come apart. Let us look at the dream. Mother Earth is dying. This is part one of the book. Your mother is dying, a crucifixion story for our times. I am hoping that the Spirit of God will guide the new guardians when they're appointed soon, that they will encourage this book to be used as a blueprint, as a blueprint for the formation of our second year novices because the Teo community is a community of brothers and sisters who embrace love, truth, who want to be with the marginalized and the world's poor, who want to be the prayer partners of the cosmic Christ. Our whole liturgy is around the cosmic Christ and the divine feminine. So it resonates because it's rooted in the tree of life. This book and all that it shares about the cosmic Christ is actually embedded within the tree of life course that Magdalena guided us to do with Francis for the training of our pre -oblets. And we go into it and it's a journey, it's an exploration and it's a powerful one and it's humbling when you think the depths that man will go to to desecrate the very word of God. It's shameful, but we have to have the strength. Like I, I pray today to do two videos. I'm just uploading the second. And I was just coming to the end of the first one where we were challenging the church, the established church and the intelligentsia within the church to take responsibility for that fear mindset that they've created today 
where many of God's children in divine service, and I'm speaking for my Franciscan brothers and sisters um, around the world, where many of the religious women are just treated as if they're just servile, and where the pe present Pope is giving religious women a really tough time and not honoring their position in the church and where they're shackled with so many edicts and rules of what they can and cannot do. I think it's shameful and I think somebody needs to stand up and I'm hoping the Teo community will. Let's go on. We belong to the ground, it is our power and we must stay close to it or maybe we will get lost. The earth is at the same time mother. She is mother of all that is natural, mother of all that is human. She is the mother of all, for contained in her are the seeds of all, Hildegard of Bingen, a Catholic nun, a Benedictine abbess, a profoundly spiritual, esoteric teacher, a woman of vision, a woman centuries ahead of herself. And yet, and yet, she paid the price for her wisdom from her peers and colleagues, but she stood her ground. And when she spoke, she spoke with the authority and the humility of God. Not like a spoiled brat who's had his sweets or cookies taken from him and throws a strop, sulks, goes off with his double chin. We need people like Hildegard and Francis again. And I feel that Matthew Fox, he isn't an arrogant, bombastic man. He's a good man. And you can see the hallmarks of the crucified one in how he's been treated by his church. It is shameful. But as Gandhi said, I like your Christ, but not your Christians. Because your Christians are not like your Christ. And that is true. The majority here where we live in upper class, snotty, snobby, middle England, 1950s, where there are no black people, you'd be amazed how snob, snobbery has come into the church and where they look down their noses. Sure, it's only last year where the congregation, mind you, most of them are over 60 and 70, they would not receive communion from a female minister in the Anglican church in the nearby parish. But it's all very la -de da But they wouldn't receive. When I heard it, I was absolutely devastated. And I was doing a demonstration of the chutneys we make in the little tea room opposite the church in the parish church of Beetham and some of the what I would call the hooray Henrys came in and um, they looked me up and down as much as to say and who are you and of course I looked them up and down and I went blessed be have you tried father's chutney it's rather grand and I said are you parishioners of Beetham and they said oh yes have you been and I said of course I've been I said is it true is it true that you won't receive communion from a female minister? And they went bright red and they said, what do you mean? I said, it's come to my attention that, that some of the, um, the people in this congregation are refusing the, the real presence of Christ from a woman vicar. Is it true? Well, well yes, it is. I said, well, they should be horsewhipped. It's sacrilege. You don't choose whether you wish to receive Christ or not from a man or a woman. You should be thankful that someone is ordained to give you communion when there are countries in the world like China where they can't receive communion. 
And I got the look as if, oh, your dust on my cloak and hello, good day. And I just said, if that is, if that is the example of how people lift their face, then it's no wonder Christ wept over Jerusalem. And I clearly hit a raw nerve. Clearly. But I didn't do it with any malice. Sometimes we have to come from love and speak up for what is right. But I couldn't do that, nor would I ever do it normally. But somehow inside you, you feel as if the Spirit of God is erupting like a volcano. And you have to challenge injustice with love. This book, The Coming of the Cosmic Christ, is that weapon. It's a weapon of love to face the injustices that mankind has leveled at the Christ, especially his church. And it's all there. True religion is the original umbilical cord that binds our individual selves back to our larger universal source. Well said. That source in women's religion is the Great Mother who is the great cosmic weaver, the divine potter, the carrier of the heavenly water jar. We participate in her substance, her nature, her processes, her plays and her work. Monica, Sejo and Barbara Moore. And this is Rosemary Reuter, Wisdom is seen as the all-encompassing divine ground of being out of which the Trinity emerges. It creates the world, guides it to perfection, and unites the creation and its creator. Wisdom is the ground of being of the three persons of God. And there's another beautiful quote. Before creation, a presence existed, self-contained, complete, formless, voiceless, mateless, changeless, which yet pervaded itself with an ending motherhood. And, and that's from Lezu. The mother's battle for her child with sickness, with poverty, with war, with all the forces of exploitation and callousness that cheapen human life needs to become a common human battle waged in love and in the passion for survival. But isn't that what Christ did? Isn't that exactly what he did? So what is the cosmic Christ under the influence of the Holy Spirit of God saying to your soul today, right now? What is the Spirit of God trying to say to your heart today? There's a lot there. There's an awful lot of good stuff there and it's all good theology because it's heart theology. It's not academic, it's heart. Sometimes looking at it out of the space station, I imagine I'm in, I get the definite but indescribable feeling that this, my maternal planet, is somehow actually breathing faintly sighing in her sleep, ever so slowly, winking and wimpling in the benign light of the sun, while her muscle-like clouds 
rise in their own meteoric tempo as veritable tissues of a thing alive. I am not brought up to think of the earth as a being. Such an impression has come to me only in this new outer perspective of space, which so provokes the thought that I cannot but wonder upon it. Could it, just could the earth be alive, Guy Murchie? But the Navo chant does it for me. It really does, and I'd love to share it with you. The earth, its life, am I. The earth, its feet, are my feet. The earth, its legs, are my legs. The earth, its body, is my body. The earth, its thoughts, are my thoughts. The earth, its speech, is my speech. Let's just reflect on that because there's so much in that Navajo chant. And the indigenous peoples got it, didn't they? The indigenous peoples had such a reverence for the cosmic Christ. But when you mention cosmic Christ today in the established church, the priest, the vicar will look at you with a sense of, oh my God. We've got a new age traveller here. And I read to you last night, didn't I, when Sister Miriam couldn't join us, devotion to the cosmic Christ was in existence in the early church. Right back at the beginning, the cosmic Christ was interceded. And somewhere along the way, man has taken a brutal turn. And mankind in history has used the name of God to destroy the life of God in God's children. And if you look at what's happening today, People are fighting over countries of land. Should they don't own the land, they're custodians of the land. We own nothing. Okay, we might be given the title deeds to our home. We might own that little plot of land on which our house is built. But that's the theory of it, the practice of it. We can do nothing with it when we snuff it, when we cross over, we hand it on or it's taken from us in government taxes. Everything we have is a gift from the cosmic Christ. Everything. But would you think that was true today when you see what's happening in Syria? What happened to that young female student in India who was gang raped and thrown from a moving bus? Where have we taken such a brutal turn in history? That's Wolf Moondance's favourite saying. And I would say this, the moment we took our eyes off God, that's when man started to behave in such an evil way. And that's why God raised up great men like Gandhi to challenge the establishment. He was a lawyer, a brilliant lawyer. Francis of Assisi, Saint Clair of Assisi, Saint Hildegard of Bingen, we just read what she said. The earth is at the same time mother. She is mother of all that is natural. Mother of all that is human. She is the mother of all, for contained in her are the seeds of all. The seeds of what? The seeds of God's love. 
the seeds of the cosmic Christ. Hildegard has written extensively on the cosmic Christ. A mystic like Catherine of Siena, like Julian of Norwich, like Trees of Avila and many more, they were given such great privileges to do and see and perceive things that we could only dream of. And the Spirit of God spoke through these great men and women and they left us a blueprint. But look how they were treated. Like dear Matthew Fox, the great Dominican, look how he was treated. And so too were many others that I know of whose names I won't mention because of litigation. But with Matthew, Matthew for me is a replica of Jesus. He's turned the tables on the self-righteous. As Jesus did, Jesus wasn't little Mr. Meek and mild and humble. He was a militant when his father's house was turned into a den of thieves. And that's what's happening today in the established church. People have become lazy, complacent. They lack discipline. Prayer has gone out the window. True love of God is not shown in how we handle people. And the scandals of the church are a blessing in disguise, I think, from God. Because the church will, should grow out of all of this turmoil. Because there are good people in the established church who've been tarnished because of the few who stepped out of their comfort zone, who took chances, who abused God's law, who abused the innocents, but they've tarnished the good name of the many, many thousands of, young, of men and women who are living the monastic life. I tell you, I wouldn't want to be a young priest or vicar today in the Christian church and have a love of children, not for sexual pleasure, but a love of children as a father would his child. For fear of someone saying, oh, because you're friendly with that little child, they start calling you a pedophile vicar or priest. I've spoken to some of them about it and they said it puts an enormous strain on their ministry. Why? Because when the church knew the church denied its existence. It knew it was happening, but it lied. And it's guilty of spiritual arrogance. As it's guilty of arrogance on denying the existence of the cosmic Christ. And that is the greatest crime of all. To deny the cosmic Christ. But we have to embrace that and we have to trust in the power and love of God, in the Holy Spirit of God. And I truly do believe that, that all of us have gone through a tsunami of sorts. And religion, all religions, are going through a spiritual tsunami since the 21st of December. It's exposing a lot of deep-rooted unhappiness within Buddhism, there's a lot of factions going on there, scra scrapping for power. Oh yes, in the Hindu, the Sikh traditions, in the Jewish traditions, sure they're all at each other's tonsils. Why? Power, greed, control. Being in love with the cosmic Christ is not about any of those things. It's about embracing a way of life. It's about embracing a love affair. It's about getting back to basics. 
It's about reclaiming the divine within you. And about following your heart and listening to your heart. And never mind anybody else. And not to model your spiritual life on the pop stars. Oh no. When Bishop Casey fell by the wayside, the Bishop of Galway, a number of years ago, and was found to have an 11 year old son in, Gal in, in New York, the people of the west of Ireland almost needed resuscitation. They couldn't handle it. Quite a few left the church because they were so disturbed by it. That is sad. Are we saying that people are in, in a religious family because of personalities? We're in it because of our love of God. So we have to take stock, don't we? But it goes on to say, the first meaning of the warning your mother is dying can be taken in reference to Mother Earth. That the Earth is our mother is a deeply held truth among the native peoples of the Americas, Africa, Asia and Europe. Among Europeans, the teachings of the great Benedictine abbess of the 12th century, Hildegard of Bingen stands out. Wow! The 12th century Benedictine abbess, our Hildegard, our Hilda, our Hilda, she's at it again. The earth is at the same time mother. She is mother of all that is natural, mother of all that is human. She is the mother of all for contained in her at the seeds of all. Native Americans speak an ancient truth when they say that native languages talk of the creation in family terms, such as Mother Earth, Grandmother Moon, the Grandfather Winds. Is our Mother Earth dying? Consider Bhopal, Chernobyl, Love Canal, Time Beach, Missouri, and now, even as I write this, the Rhine River, where 1,000 tons of chemicals, including, oh God, 8 tons of pure mercury, were spilled. The river where Hildegard of Bingen and Meister Eckhart, the two great creation mystics of Western Europe, lived and preached. Their message of compassion and interconnectivity with creation. A Swiss ecosystem, is the, sorry, a Swiss government official reports that the Rhine is now dead. D E A D. How tragic. Should the Rhine is the spine of Europe from top to bottom? How sad. The whole ecosystem is destroyed due to this accident. Today, one out of two fish eaten in cities around the Mediterranean Sea are imported because that sea is poisoned. It seems that every month a new ecological disaster is produced by the two-legged ones. Mother Earth is the victim. If this continues, eventually we and our children will pay the price. But sure, aren't we paying it now? Aren't we paying it? Of course we are. If we persist in poisoning the mother of all, then we will ultimately poison ourselves. Wow. So let us bring this to a close. And if by any chance... Miriam or somebody can't step in tomorrow evening then I'll be here to carry on this because it needs to be read the coming of the cosmic Christ is the breath of God it is the new Pentecost it is the metanoia we talked about last night the coming of God the enlightenment of man's heart 
Yes, also the Maori here in New Zealand. How true, how very true. And we were talking earlier this evening when Sister Jean called for her tea. She said, when I'm on retreat up in Mull on the 19th of um, May, on the 18th of May, it's the 1450th anniversary when Columba arrived on Iona when he brought Christianity from right across our bay here where he walked with Patrick yeah, and Cuthbert and established a little monastery just five miles from here. They walked up right across the Morgan Bay Sands and then they walked all the way up to Iona and they didn't bring pollution they brought the true word of God they brought metanoia the change within thank you for joining me let us just reflect and pray Father Mother God you know in our hearts that we love you you know within our community we're fewer now than we've ever been, but you know there is a thirst for your love. There's a thirst for your truth. There's a thirst for knowledge and wisdom. This book is a powder keg. It's going to blow open in front of those who should have promoted it, discussed it and practiced it so we pray for all who've turned their back on this amazing teaching of the cosmic Christ and the cosmic mother for it is rooted in the ancient teachings of the indigenous peoples and the early Christians we pray for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit so that we can see again we can pray again and we can be one again for you are the Christ you are the Son of God you are the Prince of Peace and you are the Beloved the Most High God and we love you and I give the Teo community to you. I give it to you because we endorse all that you say, all that you speak to our hearts. We share it and we paid the price for it as you did when you came to represent your Father, Mother God. But undeterred with your love, and the fresh outpouring of your spirit and the help from Gaia, Mother Mary, Magdalena and Kuan Yin and the whole company of heaven we have nothing to fear only you good night, God bless you until we meet again and for those of you who truly love punishment I'm back at midnight God bless. Have a lovely evening. It's ten below freezing here in Cumbria. Oh, it is cold. Wrap up warm. <laughs>